hi everyone or should I say hi world um you know me as funny gamer girl 1989 and this is the new chapter of our book podcast that is what I'm calling it and there's going to be episodes every week and there will be a part one episode where I start a book I give you the back of the book I read the first chapter and then you have to go out and read this book and then we talk about it either a week or a month later depending on when I can post the video so look back every week to make sure that I posted the video so what we're going to start this new podcast with is every last word but i'm so sorry if i butcher this tamara ireland stone and if you're watching this video you can see that the cover is on your screen right now and yeah so me when you're editing this please put the cover on the screen i have to tell myself to do that i don't know why Okay, so, oh, this has a bunch of different words. Okay, so we're going to read the back. If you could read my mind, you wouldn't be smiling. Samantha McAllister looks just like the rest of the popular girls in her junior class, but hidden under beneath the straightened hair and expertly applied makeup is a secret that her friends would never understand. Sam has purely obsessed. No OCD and is consumed by a stream of dark thoughts and worries that she can't turn off. Second guessing every move, thought, and word makes daily life a struggle, and it doesn't help that her long, lifelong friends will turn toxic at the first sign of a wrong outfit, wrong lunch, or wrong crush. Yet Sam knows she'd be truly crazy to leave the protection of the most popular girls in school. So when Sam meets Caroline, she has to keep her new friend with a refreshing sense of humor and, and no style a secret. Right up there with Sam's weekly visits to her psychiatrist. Caroline introduces Sam to Poet's Corner, a hidden room and a tight-knit group of misfits who have been ignored by the school at large. Sam is drawn to them immediately, especially a guitar-playing guy with a talent for verse and starts to discover who, a whole new side of herself. Slowly, she begins to feel n more normal than she ever has as a part of the popular crowd, until she finds a new reason to question her sanity and all she holds dear. Sorry, I stuttered a lot. That's what happens when I read, so you're just going to have to get used to it, and this is going to be fun. Okay, so that was the back of the book, so if you buy a paperback, you should be able to flip the book over and read that. And what we're going to do now is we are going to open it up, and we are going to read the first chapter. Okay. Well, it doesn't really look like the first chapter. It says six months earlier. I don't know. I've never opened this book before. I hope you can know that. Six months earlier. I shouldn't be writing, or I shouldn't be reading the notes. Haley trims a rose and passes it to me. As I attach the note to the stem with the sparkly pink ribbon, I read it. I can't help it. This one's a little over the top, but it's still sweet. I give it to Olivia and she drops it in the classroom specific bucket. No way, you guys, Olivia snorts, laughing hard as she turns the card over in her hand. I guess she's reading them too. I can't tell who wrote this, but poor boy, this is so cheesy. Someone's attempt at heartfelt poetry makes its way around the circle. Alexis falls back against my bed in hysterics. Caitlin and Haley double over on my rug. Eventually, I join in. This is mean. Let's not read them, I say, hiding the rose in the middle of the bucket, wanting to protect this anonymous guy who puts his heart out on the line for some girl in his calculus class named Jessica. Olivia grabs the stack of cards in front of me and starts thumbing through them. God, who are these people and how do we not know any of them? We're not losers. 
Alexis offers. It's a big school, Haley counters. Okay, back to work. The flowers are wilting. Caitlin's still laughing as she snaps back to her role as the leader of our Valentine's Day fundraiser. Olivia, since you like the note so much, switch places with Samantha. Olivia shakes her head and her ponytail goes flying. No way, I like my job. I'll switch. My hand's getting tired anyways, Haley says, and the two of us trade spots. I grab a rose out of the bucket and pick the scissors up off the floor. The instant I slide my fingers through the handles, this this thought hits me out of nowhere, and before I have time to react, I feel my brain sink its teeth in and latch on tight, already preparing to fight me for it. My hand starts trembling and my mouth goes dry. It's just a thought. I let the scissors fall to the floor and I shake out my hands a few times, looking around the circle to make sure no one's watching me. I'm in control. I try again, rose in one hand, scissors in the other. I squeeze my fingers together, but my palms feel clammy, and my fingers are tingling, and I can't get a solid grip. I look up at Caitlin, sitting directly across from me, watching her face twist and blur as the waves of nausea passes over me. Breathe. Find a new thought. If I cut it once, I'll keep going. I know I will. I'll move on to the next rose and the next one, and I'll keep cutting until there's nothing left but a huge pile of stems, leaves, and petals. After that, I'll massacre those syrupy, sweet, carefully written notes. Every single one of them. God, that's so twisted. Then I'll take the scissors to Olivia's ponytail and cut right through that hair tie. Okay, so it swears here, and I'm not going to swear. So I'm going to say, shoot. Okay? Shoot. New thought, new thought. I need a glass of water, I say, standing and hoping none of them notice the sweat beating up on my forehead. Now, Caitlin asks, come on, Samantha, you'll hold up go hold everything up. My legs are wobbly and I'm not sure I can trust them to get me downstairs. But somehow the scissors are gone and the banister is in my head hand instead. I head straight into the kitchen and run my hands under the water. The water is cold. Listen to the water. Are you okay? Paige's voice breaks through the chatter in my head. I hadn't even seen my little sister sitting at the counter doing her homework. That's when I spot the knife block full of knives and a pair of scissors. I could slice right through her hair. I take big steps backward until I slam into the refrigerator. My knees give out and I slide to the floor, gripping the sides of my head, burying my face into my hands to make it a dark, repeating the mantras. Sam, open your eyes. Mom's voice sounds far away, but I obey her words, and when I do, the two of us are nose to nose. Talk to me now. I look over at the staircase, wide-eyed. Don't worry, she says. They won't find out. They're upstairs. I hear Mom whispering to Paige, telling her to get a bag of chips up to my room and keep my friends distracted. Then she grabs both of my hands so hard, her wedding ring digs into one of my knuckles. They're just thoughts, she says calmly. Say it, please. They're just thoughts. I can echo her words, but not the steadiness in her voice. Good. You're in control. When I look away from her, she grips my arm harder. I'm in control. She's wrong. I'm not. How many thunks does the brain automatically deliver in a single day? Mom moves on to facts to help me center myself. 70,000, I whisper as tears splash onto my jeans. That's right. Do you act on 70,000 thoughts a day? I shake my head. Of course you don't. This thought was 1 in 70,000. It's not special. It's not special. Good. Mom pinches my chin and lifts my head, forcing me to look at her again. I love you, Sam. She smells like her favorite lavender-scented lotion, and I inhale it, feeling a host of newer, prettier thoughts, overpowering the darker, scarier ones. Whatever you're thinking, it's okay. It doesn't mean anything about you. Got it? Now tell me. The two of us have been here before. It hasn't happened in a long time, not like this. But Mom slips right into her assigned role as if it's second nature. She's well-trained. Scissors, I whisper, dropping my head to my chest, feeling dirty and sick and humiliated. I hate telling her these awful thoughts, but I hate the thought spiral even more. And this is my ticket out. I'm well trained too. The roses. Olivia's hair and Paige. Mom doesn't make me finish. She wraps her arms around me and I grab a hold of her t-shirt, sobbing into her shoulder, telling her I'm sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for. She pulls away and kisses my forehead. Now stay here. I'll be right back. Please don't, I beg. I know she won't listen. She's 
doing what she has to do. I dig my fingernails into the back of my neck three times over and over again until she returns. When I look up, she's crouched down in front of me again, holding the scissors flat in her hand. Take them, please. I don't want to touch them, but I don't have a choice. My fingernail connects with the cold, cold metal, and I let it slide over the blade slightly, slowly, just tickling the surface. When I feel the handle, my, I curl my fingers through the holes. Mom's hair is dangling my, in my face. I could cut it, but I would never do that. Good, it's just a pair of scissors. They triggered a few scary thoughts, but you won't act on them because you, Samantha McAllister, are a good person. Her voice sounds closer now. I drop the scissors on the floor and give them a hard push to get them as far as away from me as possible. I throw my arms around Mom's shoulders, hugging her hard, hoping this isn't the last. This is the last time we go through this, but it, knowing it isn't, the anxiety attacks are like earthquakes. I'm always relieved when the ground stops shaking, but I know there will be another one eventually, and again, I'll never see it coming. What am What am I going to tell them? My friends can't know about my OCD or the D debilitating, uncontrollable thoughts because my friends are normal and perfect. They pride themselves on norm normalcy and perfection, and they can't ever find out how far I am from those two things. Paige is sitting in for you on Rose duty. The girls think you're helping me with something in the kitchen. Mom hands me a dish towel so I can clean myself up. Go back upstairs whenever you're ready. I sit alone for a long time, taking deep breaths. I still can't look at the scissors on the far end of the kitchen floor, and I'm pretty sure Mom will hide all the sharp objects for the next few days, but I'm okay now. Still, I can hear this one thought hiding in the dark corners of my mind. It doesn't attack like the others, but it's frightening in a totally different way because it's not because it's the one that never leaves and it's the one that scares me the most. What if I am crazy or what if I'm crazy? Probably is crazy. Oh, got to get closer to the microphone. She probably is crazy. <sighs> my brain is just like Wow, I sort of want to start this book now, but I'm reading the Twilight series. I'm on the third book. I'm not, I'm reading the actual series. I'm not reading the, um, the extra books. I'm just reading the straight series. I'm not getting the entirety of it. Like the one with Edward's point of view or something. I'm not getting that one. But, um... Yeah, I'm reading that now, and I I want to finish that series, because I just started Eclipse, and I... <sighs> yeah, I want to be able to finish it, because... Okay, so, I got the Twilight book from the first one, from one of my friends, and then I went to Barnes & Noble to get the rest, the other three, and they only had New Moon, which is the second book. So I was like, okay, so then... My mom and I, we went on Barnes & Noble, the website, and then we ordered the other two and shipped them here. We got them, like, yesterday or the day before, but on Thursday, because I finished both Twilight books, I decided to start the Harry Potter series, so I just finished the first book today, and now I'm starting the third book. It's just a whole lot of crazy because now I got to figure out when I'm going to read the rest of the Harry Potter series and I got 10 books for Christmas and I don't know what's going on. So yeah. It's fun. And yeah. So I got I think 10 books for Christmas. A couple little candies and stuff like that. Then I got this microphone thing that I'm using to record this podcast right now. And it's so strange because I have to have, like, my face close to it. And I feel like I'm just, like, because it has, like, that little guard there to protect, like, the background noise. But there is no background noise right now. So I'm just, like, trying to have good posture because it's pretty high up. So I have to have good posture to reach it. And then I have to go really close to this thing so you can actually hear me so that it won't drown me out like background noise so yeah 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 that's fun and then another thing I got was a keyboard piano not like a keyboard like type 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 I don't think you can hear but I was just like typing on my macbook 
not like that kind of keyboard but like a piano keyboard and it is so cool it has like 601 different things i'm it's wait it's right over here let me read what it is it's a roland ex10 i saw it on um well my dad actually recommended because i was like i want to get a keyboard so i you know So yeah. Okay. So that was the first chapter of the back of the book and yeah, I haven't even read it yet. So usually I go into recording book podcasts or recording any of these episodes with prior knowledge like okay, I know what happens in this book. I'm just going to like read it and then we're going to talk about it afterwards and say what happened in the book but i can't do it with this one because i haven't read it yet and i don't know what happens and i'm not going to look it up online because i'm not i don't do that so yeah um so i'll see you guys like in a couple weeks if you want to see the other one but if you can check out my other content I'm trying to do good content because, um, there's, like, this verification thing that I can do. I don't know if I can go live, but it's something. You can do a bunch of stuff if you do this verification. You can do more, like, YouTuber stuff and do a bunch of cool stuff with it. So, I am have, like, a two-month verification. And it's gonna, like, watch all my videos. So, I hope, yeah, I hope you guys watch this and watch some of my other content we're at 30 subscribers i'm i mean that's amazing um so yeah i'm gonna dip out now and check for i think i'm gonna do like a little video on my Christmas gift dilemma. So yeah, check for that too if you want to see me talking more about my crazy problems. So yeah, peace out and bye. I don't know why, but I always do the peace out even though you can't see me. Like this is a voice podcast, so you cannot see me, but I'm literally doing the peace out. (sighs) I just do that every time. It's like muscle memory. Like when I say, even if I just say peace out to someone, Sometimes I still do, I don't know, but it's not like I say peace out, like, to problems. I'm going to say peace out, bye. See you guys, hopefully sometime soon, don't, don't know. And hopefully I actually get to post this video because I just edit videos and, or I just make videos and then I never post them or I never edit them. I have, like, thousands of videos recorded, but I never edit because it takes too long. So yeah, peace out, bye.